Good morning, everybody. It's the second Sunday of Easter, and so Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Awesome job. Awesome job. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to start off with a great Christ is risen, and just to see that you're awake and ready for us, announcements to begin with. And so we have a couple of things. We're going to be doing communion, and so uh, make sure you got that drink and the bread out. Then we have an announcement. Grace Flory has uh, been moved to an assisted living home, and so we'll get that information about where to send a card or a letter um, in the weekly newsletter. Any other announcements? I don't think so. Okay, uh, just a thank you to two, two people, two groups of people. First is all your, uh, I get some emails and thoughts and warm prayers. Thank you for the stuff that your feedback you've given us. Um, thank you for your warm support, your generous support of the congregation. That's just so awesome. And then the production team, Dom and Nikki, good job. You guys are doing an awesome okay. job. Uh, other than that, let's move on. The call to worship, and so we'll read that responsibly. It's from Psalm 18, and it starts, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Hark, glad sound, songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has ch chastened me sorrowly, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteousness shall enter through it. I thank thee that thou hast answered me and hast become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech thee. O Lord, O Lord, we beseech thee, give us success. Blessed be he who enters in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Find the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will give thanks to thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Gratefully our hearts adore him as his light once more appears. Bowing down in joy before him, rising up from griefs and tears. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the Springing up from holy ground. 
God. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, henceforth never, death or hell shall us enthrall. Be we Christ in him forever, we have triumphed over all. All the doubting and dejection of our trembling hearts have ceased. Hail the day of resurrection, let us rise and keep the feast. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the Let us continue with the prayer of the day. Almighty God, we gather as your people in an unusual and unique way. We continue to trust your presence in our midst as we give glory and sing praise to you. Open our hearts to see you today in some way. Lord, we just trust you in this. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us continue with the readings. Our first reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little, while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This ends the first reading. Our gospel lesson today is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Steve for the children's message. Awesome. Awesome job reading, by the way. I just want to let you know. Thank you. Um, Appreciate that. Moving into the children's sermon, I just wanted to let the children know it's 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 always helpful to read, and so practice reading. And so um, I would say, come on up front, but just go ahead and sit in front of you. I, I have a couple of props I want to start out with today. And I really, this the children's sermon is... How do we know it's Easter Sunday? Because it's still Easter Sunday. We said Christ is risen. And I just wanted you, you know, you, oh, you can't smell these here, but these are chocolate eggs. Oh, they smell good. Oh, can you smell them over there a little bit? Oh, I can. Yes. Oh, and they're dark chocolate. Oh, they're dark chocolate. Oh, they're they're healthy oh, chocolate. Did you see Miss Nikki's face? Yes. Oh, we maybe afterwards, if we have a great day and we know the Lord is going to give us a great morning, that we'll have a couple afterwards or take them home. Um, there's peeps in the air, and there's robin eggs. Oh, I, you know, it's Easter. You know it because what? Because there's candy still here, right? And I say to myself, that's not what Easter is about. There's a couple lessons today. First, the lesson is, you know, Pastor still Steve still has candy, so get your candy early and get it in large quantities in case something like this happens in the future. Be prepared for Easter, right? But Easter's not about candy. Easter's about the risen Lord. It was in the lessons today, right? That today, God loves us so much that he comes and he dies, and that's not such good news, but the great news, the great news is that the death is for us and that we have everlasting life. And, and so it says, I want to read what it says right here, because this is a storybook. And the storybook, let me get my glasses out. It's about the Easter miracle. And instead of reading the whole thing, I thought I would just read the very end. Many people saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. Jesus told his followers, that's us, by the way, to go everywhere and tell them about Jesus and what Jesus had did. And then the reading today had the awesome moment where the Holy Spirit comes to you and me, even children and adults, and they come and it makes a difference that the Holy Spirit leads us to do God's work. So Easter, we can get caught up in the moment. I can get caught up in the moment that Easter candy seems like it's the theme, but it's not. That's just a trimming. And the trimming is that Jesus dies for us and is the risen Lord. Amen? Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Seems like there's so much to hope for, so many dreams I wish they all would come true. When I think about your ways, Lord, it gives me so much faith in all that you do. Faith to see beyond what I can see. Faith to know that you I will trust you, Lord, I'll always believe. As I hold on to my faith, Jesus, you are holding on to me. Seems like there's so much to hope for. So many dreams I wish they all would come true. When I think about your ways, Lord, it gives me so much faith in all that you do. Faith to see beyond what I can't see. Faith to know that you will do great things. I you, Lord, I'll always believe. As I hold on to my faith, Jesus, you are holding on to me. 
as I hold on to my faith. Jesus, you are holding on to me. Hi, everybody. This morning, I'm here to bring you the message. And I, I just want to tell you that normally this Sunday has a name for it. It's called Low Sunday. And I'm looking around here right now and I'm thinking, yeah, it's pretty low in here. But I know it's not. Because just as an FYI, we've been getting over 100 hits on and views on our YouTube channel with our services. So this is most definitely not going to be a low Sunday. Also, if you listen to the readings, this Sunday also focuses on doubting Thomas. And so we know so many of us, that's what we think about when we think about what happens after Easter. But it's less about doubting Thomas and more about finding our faith. You know, we aren't so different from him. We doubt. We need to see to believe so often. So this whole morning for me is a focus on our faith and our belief. You know, faith isn't knowing for sure that something's going to happen. It's actually the very opposite. Faith is not knowing that something will happen. It's not being sure about anything at all. But it's actually going ahead and taking those steps anyways. That is faith. Right now is a perfect example of the faith we put in our God. When this whole shelter in place thing started our original plan was to have 10 people come to two services run at the same time and within 24 hours of that decision it was oh no we're not doing any services at all and we did we went by faith we did not know what was going to happen we knew something was going to happen and what you see is the faith that we have in our god allowing us to reach out to you in this manner you know when Jesus was absent from the disciples hearts that's when they had their fears but when he was there and he was present right with them their fears were re removed and that's so often what happens with us when we look away from God we have those fears and those anxieties like the first disciples last Sunday we experienced Jesus riding rising from the dead and we were free from fear. We went from Good Friday, where it was very somber, to a hallelujah Easter morning. And then we turned around on Easter Monday, and we were back to sheltering in place and having to figure out this life again. You know, the question I was going to ask you is, what fears are you experiencing? And they might be different today than they were two months ago. You know, talking with um, Lynn Garrison today, they had to put grace in assisted living and nobody's been able to talk to her or go in to see her since she's been to the hospital. So these are different fears we're facing in today as we shelter in place. People are without work. People don't know where their next paycheck or meal is coming. So today we have a different set of fears. And when those fears flare up, it's so easy to forget about God. It's so easy to forget. But if you can keep in your mind that vision of Jesus standing there saying, peace be with you. As my father has sent me, so I send you. And you know, he's giving us that same command. Reach out with your telephones, reach out with your Facebook pages, reach out with your emails, even your snail mail. And reach out and share your faith, even when you feel powerless right now. You know, so often we allow ourselves to be shattered by the strain of what's happening in each of our lives. We just try to make sense out of it. And right now, Pastor Steve and I were just talking, we're so bombarded with what we're hearing from different news media and the political game that's being played. And you know, the bottom line is, we need to listen to our God and our Savior. Before he came to see them that day, they were fearful. They were behind closed doors. They were locked away. And Thomas wasn't there. How many of us are like Thomas that next day? What do you mean he was here? I don't believe that. Do we need to see? Do we need to have that faith? As I was studying the lessons, this first Peter is such a perfect tie-in with John. It talks about Christian suffering and it talks about hope. It talks about a belief in God. 
You know, in the end of that reading, excuse me, it says, although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice in him. And that is so important. When Peter wrote this, it was about AD 64. There were perse persecutions taking place among Christian churches at that time, and they were being alienated for their faith. Peter used this lesson to remind them of the grace of God and to stay true to their faith and their calling. You know, life is difficult, no matter when it is, and it demands insight and it demands endurance. However, it's hard to see that future when you're sitting right here in the present. Peter gives us a hope. He gives us a hope that absolutely never wears out. Hope of God doesn't fade and it doesn't die. You know, the early church was in danger of giving up their faith. They didn't see that hope at first. And Peter assures them that as followers of God, there is hope. When you see hope, when you feel hopeless in your life, what do you do? There are times I just want to lay on my sofa, cover up in my blankets, and hide from the world for a while. Do you give up? Do you face the resolve that nothing is going to change? Maybe you ignore your suffering. And when we ignore our suffering, that just means we pretend it's not there. And when we pretend, we give ourselves a false sense of security. We build up fences, we build up walls, and we create ourselves a way just to protect ourselves. We have some choices. We can believe in hope, or we can pretend to have hope. There was a football coach from Ohio State. His name was Woody Hayes. Shortly before his death, he was interviewed, and he was asked if anything was more important than winning. And Woody answered yes. The most important thing is not always to win. It's always to hope. Dr. Harold Wolf from the Cornell University of Medical School conducted an investigation that involved 25,000 American soldiers who were in prison during World War II. Under terrible conditions, inhuman treatment and forced labor, many died and many just became sick. Dr. Wolf discovered a few who showed very few physical problems. One characteristic stood out among them. They had an above average ability to hope and believe in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If they can do that in that situation, we can do it in April, on April 19th. 2020. So today I ask you, reflect on our lives as disciples of Christ. Allow that peace to be with each of you. Look at his hands and take that spirit of God and have hope and be like Thomas and shout to the world, my Lord and my God. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue with the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving God, we gather here as your people to give you joy, to give you thanks and praise. Lord, this gathering comes to you in so many different places and different homes, but we trust your presence through the unity of the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the technology that allows us to worship together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we live in a world right now that's filled with fear and anxiety over so much brought upon this virus, this COVID-19. Lord, we just continue to trust your presence to 
move us to call out to each other, to calm each other down in a very anxious time. Lord, just be with us as we are together in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we just continue to ask that you're with the first responders, those that are leading in the hospital, the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, all the people. Lord, just be with them. Help them keep safe. Help us in this time as we're sheltered in place. Help us to go in public and be safe. We just trust you in this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, it is Easter. Help us to celebrate. Help us to remember this time of hope, the risen Lord. Help us not to be doubters, but help us to believe. Remind us, Lord, of your presence in our life and the risen Lord promise that we will be with him too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. So we're going to take this moment to silently and out loud with our tongue mention names and petitions of the people that we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks. We continue to give you thanks for the call process that Lord, we so often think it's installed, but Lord, in your time, so we're going to trust you in your time to be with the call committee, the whole process of calling a new pastor, just open up the path so we could move forward in calling a new pastor to this community. Be with our pastor candidate, Pastor Nate, Lord, just to continue to move him forward in his life, serving you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the great thanksgiving. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the cup and the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Could you join us in our praying our Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's take our bread and together the body of Christ given for you. Amen, Jesus. And now let's take our cup and our drink. The blood of Christ shed for us on the cross. And just a page. I mean, so remember. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Watch the waters part before us now Come and see what he has done for us Tell the world of his great love Our God is a God who saves Our God is a God who saves The God of And the church will stand, she 
will endure Cause he holds the key to life our Lord Death has no sting, no final word Our God is the God who saves Our God is the God who saves Let God arise Let God arise Our God reigns now and forever He reigns now and forever God arise Let God arise Our God reigns Go in peace and serve the Lord with enthusiasm.